and follow these guidelines for how to uh, make and market your shirt. All right. If you've made it with me this far in the webinar, I'm going to assume that you're sold on the idea of t-shirts as a really great marketing and revenue tool for your, for your mobile game or your mobile app. But how does Merch by Amazon actually work? How do the mechanics work out? How do you avoid, well, <laughs> how do you avoid being this guy with your garage crammed full of boxes, you know, pressing your wife and kids into forced labor, shipping stuff all over the country? Well, you avoid that because with Merch by Amazon, Amazon's going to do all of that hard work for you. Uh, let me start with what, what Amazon does. Amazon will print your t-shirts for your customers when they place an order on the Amazon website, and then we'll ship it off to them. Uh, we've actually got a fair amount of experience selling stuff online, handling secure transactions, shipping stuff, dealing with returns. So we'll take care of all that stuff for you too. Um, what, what we'll do is we'll take our expenses of making the shirt and doing all that stuff. We'll take our expenses off the top of the purchase price of the shirt when it's ordered, and we'll send the rest of the sales proceeds to you as a royalty to your bank account. What this means is there's absolutely no out-of-pocket expense for you at any point in the process. You don't ever send Amazon a check and order a 1,000 shirts for sale. Uh, we go ahead and do that uh, via printing the shirt on demand and we cover our expenses only when you sell a shirt. This is great. It means that, you know, take a shot at red designing a shirt. Even if you only sell the shirt to one person, trust me, your mother's going to love it, you're going to make a small royalty on that, and it's not going to cost you anything, even if you just sell one to your mom. So uh, let's say your mom goes ahead and, and buys one. Amazon is also going to make sure that we can ship that shirt anywhere in the United States. And we're also going to make it possible for you to advertise and merchandise and promote your shirts anywhere. And I mean, anywhere, really. I mean, it's not an Amazon exclusive thing. It's not an Amazon App Store only thing. You can actually promote and sell your t-shirts on your iOS apps, your Android apps, Windows, Mac, Samsung App Store, any app store at all. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even have to be an app store. It can be a web app. You can promote your T-shirts, and I really do hope you promote your T-shirts, on social media. If you want to do in-app advertising, it not only works with the Amazon ad network, it works with any ad network. Really, anywhere you can put a URL that will get you to the Amazon.com website, you can sell your T-shirts. And this includes print. If you ever print out flyers for a convention or if you have any other printed packaging on any of the projects that you work on, put the URL for your shirt there. Um, you can use tools like bit.ly.com to make nice, short, friendly URLs, and that will really increase the number of shirts that you can sell with, with Amazon.com. Now, you are going to have to do some work, though, and you're going to need to take some of the art from your game and use our onload our yeah, and use our online tool to upload that into our system. You're also going to need to pick shirt colors, the style of shirt you'd like, and and send us a description of the shirt that you've just made. Then you need to market your shirt. Yes, you may have built a better mousetrap, but the world doesn't actually beat a path to your door. You're actually going to have to tell people about this amazing mousetrap or maybe mousetrap picture T-shirt uh, in order to sell it. And, and we can't do that for you. You're on your own for that. Um, well, not, not really true. You're not really on your own for that because, I mean, that's what you're doing here at this webinar, right? Um, we're going we're gonna to share with you what's worked in the past and some of the tips and tricks that we've picked up from selling shirts. And to get started on that, I want to start with the tools because I'm going to give you the tips and tricks as they relate to how you actually create the t-shirt. So let me give you just a quick run through of how the tools work. The first thing that you're going to want to do is upload your artwork. We have templates, free templates that you can download. You can use them with GIMP, you can use them with Photoshop or Illustrator, and they'll help you get a really good quality art in the space that's available on the shirt. 
and you can actually take the art and you, it'll actually show it on a mock-up of a shirt so you can see what that'll look like and where the image is relative to the rest of the shirt. Super valuable templates. Go ahead and download those for free. Uh, once you get the artwork looking good, go ahead and upload it to the front of the shirt. Um, upload it to the back of the shirt. Heck, you can upload a picture to the front and a picture to the back of your shirt. Once you've finished uploading your artwork, you then go ahead and configure the shirt. Configuring the shirt means picking whether you want a uh, relaxed fit shirt, whether you want a fitted shirt, whether you want to offer the shirt available in men's and women's and youth sizes, or, or maybe just men's and women's. You get to pick some colors for your shirt. More on, more on this later. You get to set a price for your shirt. Um, actually, this is a pretty cool little calculator. What you get to do is you get to set the suggested list price for your shirt. And you can see right there in the calculator what Amazon is going to take off the top of that. So you take, in this case, 19.99, you subtract 12.31, and the estimated royalty that we'll deposit in your bank account at the end of the month is 7.68 for every shirt. Now, okay, you're not going to see hundreds of $7.68 transactions in your bank account. Um, but at the end of every month, we're going to add up all the royalties that you've earned, and we'll go ahead and do a direct deposit to your, uh, to your account for most developers. Um, so that's going ahead and setting the, um, the con shirt configuration. But you also need to tell customers kind of what your shirt's about. So you have an opportunity to add a brand name, which may be the the company name, it may be um, uh, one of your subsidiary brands, the title of the product or the title of the shirt. Again, you can twiddle list price if you want to, and then a couple key product features or bullet points. Farther down on that page, you can actually enter a product description that tells more about the shirt and uh, why it's so cool. Once you've entered that data, we'll give you a mock-up of what your shirt's web page will look like when your shirt's web page is on Amazon.com. Now, take a look at the right-hand side. Uh, you'll see three radio buttons under the section Select Availability of Your T-Shirt. The first one is a draft. Hey, I get that you may not finish all of this in 30 minutes, and you may want to um, you know, put a pin in it and save some of that work for later. Go ahead and save it as a draft. Come back and work on it when you have time. The next two are interesting. The middle one is Sample. What Sample does is it creates a link to your shirt's product page on Amazon.com, but it doesn't let users search for the shirt. In order for someone to find and buy your shirt listed as a sample, they have to enter the exact URL. This is great if you want to put a shirt up there and then order one for yourself to make sure it looks good, to make sure it fits right. Maybe you want to run a limited beta of some of your shirts uh, with some of your best users, you can go ahead and publish it as a sample and then give people the direct link so that they can go and get to the product detail page of your shirt. Uh, of course, the, the bottom option is sell. It's public on Amazon. Not only can they get there with the URL that belongs to your shirt's detail page, but all of your stuff is searchable as well. They can go ahead and uh, type into any Amazon uh, store search box, the, the, the name of your shirt, the stuff, and it'll, it'll, it'll come up in, in user searches. So that's how you use the, the tools. This is uh, an example of the end result of those tools. This is what the actual Amazon.com product detail page looks like. All right, now that we've covered that, what shirt uh, should you make? Well, let me share some of the tips that you'll use when you go through that creation process we just talked about. Predictably popular are characters in your game. It's what players identify with. It's what, what's what the people are really going to uh, identify with as an avatar. Now, what we found works really well are collections of characters. For example, all the good guy characters on one shirt typically sells better than the shirts with just one good guy per shirt on it. And the you know, same thing with bad guys. Put all the bad guys or all the nemesis or all the evil mean monsters on, on one shirt, and that will sell better than shirts with an individual character on it. Now, of course, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do individual shirts. For example, the shirt we have here is a Prism Dragon from Dragon Vale, and quite frankly, that's a gorgeous shirt. I mean, that is a really beautiful character. 
and it sells very well. So don't be afraid to go ahead and, and, and do that when you have something that's obviously so popular with your customers. Um, uh, you know, and another another good example of art to use are Skinner game elements. So if you have a, a racing game and your player has just won Le Mans and gets a special Le Mans livery for their car, absolutely offer them an image of the car with that special Le Mans winner livery on it. That's a fantastic shirt that says, "Yeah, I t I, got, I play this game and I won Le Mans. And I'm pretty proud of that." Kind of. Kind of like my, you know, finishing the 5K. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. So, so look for signature events and milestones that uh, your customer would really like to celebrate, and go ahead and, and and put those on a shirt. So, those are examples of good art to use. Things that are trending now are distressed designs. Also trendy are simple, identifiable silhouettes that work with content with. Now, let's say with characters on it, definitely makes it easy to identify the characters and, and really makes them pop. Uh, using bold, high contrast colors is great. Um, also use larger art in your t-shirt design elements. One of the reasons that larger art seems to work well is because a lot of shirt promotion activities shrink the size of the shirt into, you know, even something just as big as an icon. And a lot of really small detail on a shirt is going to get lost when you actually shrink it down really small for an ad. And the larger art elements really do a good job of standing out. So even when you shrink the size of your shirt for an ad placement or for social media placement, people can still make out what the real key points of the shirt are. And they can identify those elements easily and they're more likely to click through the ad and get to your product page. So uh, those, are, those are good tips on, on things that are trending now. Things that are not doing well now are, are big blocky designs, things that look like they're contained in a rectangular block. I mean, yes, we're giving you a 15 by 18 inch rectangular space, and you could fill the whole thing with one color and uh, put a nice border around it and then put in some other things. But honestly, that doesn't look I mean, it looks like you just filled a rectangle with color and then ironed it on or printed it on the, on the shirt. It's not, it's not really professional looking. So uh, try not to do that. Pick designs that go really well against the background colors of the shirts that you've chosen. Now, um, that comes with a, a bit of a warning. Elements that you try to subtly blend into the shirt color can raise some, some printing issues, raise some problems. They can print kind of like a, a halo with a hard edge. So trying to gently uh, blend stuff, blend colors into the shirt is probably not going to work well. I mean, uh, for an example, think about how web safe colors have really big jumps between the colors that are available for you. Now, that being said, I know you're probably tempted to use some transparency in your images. What we found is that elements that have a transparency of less than 20% are likely to get lost while printing, and they'll, they'll just sort of turn up as a solid color. And that's not going to really look the way you want it to anyway. So designs that have a, um, um, uh, a, a better plan with how to work with the background of the shirt are absolutely going to look better and sell better. Um, so really, um, the example I have here on, on the slide is um, that a single large logo that's big and rectangular as the element doesn't sell well. Trust me, my, this shirt did not do well at all. Um, and it also doesn't do well printing it on a uh, simple white shirt. Um, looks kind of like you're out wearing your undershirt around with a great big, huge, blocky picture of it. So don't do that. Now, if you have uh, a professional designer on staff or if you have more professional graphic arts design backgrounds, we do have some expert tips for you to keep in mind. Most um, people will do their design work in the RGB color space. And the RGB color space is considerably more broad than the, the, printing, space, the printing color space that you have. I mean, CYMK has um, a much more restricted space than RGB does. So metallic colors and pastel colors are pretty difficult to render in CYMK. So think about that as you're doing some really uh, fancy touches on RGB work. Uh, again, 
uh, resolution is really important. 300 DPI native. And if your art is coming in at 200 DPI, seriously, don't try and rescale it or resize it. You're going to end up with pixelated, blocky art, and you're really not going to be happy with that. That's, that's not, a, not a good thing at all. Also, please do remember to submit files that are less than 25 megabytes in size. This may seem like an onerous requirement, but it's not. The tools for which we have templates available, GIMP, and Photoshop, and, and Illustrator, all have really good tools uh, that you can use to save uh, really uh, good uh, PNGs at a small size. It'll go ahead and it'll collapse a lot of the layers when you export it as a PNG, and you'll end up with a nice small PNG that you can easily upload uh, to our tools. Now, when you design your image, you're not just designing an image, you're designing an entire shirt. And you really need to take into consideration where that design is. For example, um, someone's going to be wearing this shirt, and where your design falls anatomically on the shirt could, could be really important. I mean, just spending a few minutes thinking about that could avoid some nasty, embarrassing scenarios. So generally speaking, uh, when you have a 15-inch by 18-inch rectangle, you don't have to use the whole thing. The whole, you know, making sure that you stretch your image from corner to corner may actually be a little bit overkill on that. So again, think about the size shirt that you'll be printing on and think about how that's going to work. So I really want you to use the templates and I really want you to see how your design looks when it's shown on a shirt blank. Uh, typically, we see shirts whose designs um, are printed in the top of the space, those typically do a little bit better than shirts whose design uh, is kind of focused or weighted towards the bottom of the space. Uh, and that should give you some, some really good expert tips to use. Now, uh, the next thing you do in our tools after you've picked the artwork is you get to pick what colors to use. Now, just because we offer a whole bunch of colors available doesn't mean you have to use them all. Uh, please, um, you know, pick, pick three or four colors. Really, I would prefer that you picked um, three colors because if you start picking a whole bunch of colors, you end up with analysis paralysis for your customer. Um, I, I know when I took economics class also, the teacher kept saying, you know, you've got to offer your customer tons of choices. If you have tons of choices, you're more likely to meet the exact needs of any given customer, and they'll be much happier. Well, what my economics professor kind of missed is that customers don't behave rationally at the margin. They see way too many choices, and in, instead of, you know, getting confused and just picking one, they get confused and they don't pick anything. Okay, so you're going to pick three colors for your shirt. Darker colors sell better than lighter colors. Actually, let me give you a, a bit of an insider information here. Um, when you see that tool on the Amazon, Amazon Upload tool, we actually order the colors in order of popularity. So if you're wondering what colors are the most popular, take a look at the current order of the colors. And yes, depending on season, depending on time of year, the order of those colors may change, which indicates that different shirt colors are more popular at that particular point in time. So um, uh, that's, that's a pretty cool insider tip there. Another thing I want you to think about is that your design may look great against the dark background, but maybe you need to modify your design or change your art somewhat in order for it to look good against a lighter background. There's nothing wrong with making two different shirts. One design optimized for a dark uh, color t-shirt, one design optimized for a light color t-shirt. Uh, when you're approved into Merch by Amazon, you get the ability to make 25 shirts. So absolutely going ahead and, and optimizing for dark color or back color background shirts is worth your time. You'll sell more shirts and you'll have happier customers. All right, after you've picked the colors in your shirt, it's time to pick a price. Let me just give you some data that you can use to decide what is best for your business. The uh, average selling price for a shirt on Merch is around $18. Now, the, the mode, the most popular selling price is $19.95, and we've certainly had a lot of success with shirts priced at $19.95. Now, if you want to go over $19.99, 
really have a good reason to do so. I'm concerned that if you go over 1999, you're going to see volume of shirt sales fall off more dramatically than any increase will actually generate additional revenue for the shirt. As a matter of fact, kind of one of the trends that we're starting to see is more shirts are going on sale for $14.95 and coming in right under $15. So uh, think, about, think about that when you're pricing your shirt. Uh, for you developers out there, um, you need to do the, the thought exercise of whether you want to maximize revenue for each individual shirt sold or whether you just want to get as many shirts out there as possible to help bolster your brand and spread the word about this great game that you have. So um, given, given those exercises, here's the data that will help you kind of make a decision around a good price point. Now, you've selected your price point. It's time to write your, your shirt's bullet points. This is, this is kind of a pet peeve of mine, guys. I really want you to keep these bullet points short, informative, and clear. Now, think about the customer experience. This is not the right place to cram a bunch of keywords. I mean, every keyword that might possibly sell your shirt crammed into two bullet points. Seriously, that's, that's an awful customer experience, and it's not going to help you sell shirts. So, uh, to that end, I want to kind of share with you some things that don't typically work well as bullet points. One, packing it you know, full of keywords. Just, just don't. It's not that helpful, and it hurts sales. Two, actually mentioning where the shirt is made isn't such a great idea. I mean, yes, we're really proud that all of the shirts that we ship in the United States now are made in the United States. That's pretty cool. And I can get that you'd really like to, to brag about that, too. But consider, should we choose to open a market, say, in, um, in Europe, uh, it's entirely possible that we might find an EU shirt supplier. And in that case, the people in the EU will be thrilled that their shirts are made from an EU supplier, like we're thrilled that our shirts are made from a U.S. supplier. But all of a sudden, that turns your bullet point into a lie because your customers in the EU may be getting shirts that are sourced in the EU, not the U.S. So... I don't want to have to make you guys check and go out and modify and, and update your bullet points based on, on business that changes that Amazon does. So similarly, please don't promise anything about shipping, uh, particularly because Amazon is going to ship to Prime customers with two-day shipping. And if your customer is not a Prime customer, they may not get their shirt in two days. So please don't promise anything uh, about shipping because if somehow you promise something and it's not delivered on, it's, it's going to hurt the credibility of those bullet points, anything. Uh, another thing, don't, don't promise um, donations to charity. You can't generate a tax receipt for your customer. They're not going to be able to print their Amazon receipt as a, as a viable IRS-approved proof of donation, nor is it necessarily certain that you, know, you can guarantee that you're going to donate a certain percentage. So if you are supporting a charity, you can absolutely mention that you're supporting a charity, but please don't promise anything about donating a certain percentage. Uh, that's, that's just going to be, that's going to be misleading and, and a little hurtful to people who may want to deduct that. All right. So those are bullet points. And like bullet points there, you know, you can write really good ones. And some good ones are descriptive. It's the official shirt of your brand. Use the bullet points to describe, hey, we've got something printed on the front and we've got something printed on the back. What do you have printed on the back? This is what we have printed on the back. Those are, those are examples of good descriptive bullet points. Now, you have a little bit more freedom when it comes to writing a product description because your product description can be, well, your product description is actually should be like the dating profile of your, of your shirt. It's a place where you can have a little bit of fun with that. And when the customer is finished reading the product description for your shirt, they should know why they want it, why it's cooler than all the other shirts out there, and why they may want to take your shirt home. So again, Packing your product description full of keywords at the expense of readability and good messaging is going to hurt sales more than it helps sales. So uh, what is a good shirt description? Well, uh, a good shirt description might be, um, you know, kind of talking to the, to the nature of the customer you expect to buy your shirt. So in this political season, if you want to attract someone who's active politically, you might try a product description like the one here. 
All right, I'm not going to read it to you uh, because you guys can watch the replay later. You guys can read this to yourself later. But it's good. It, it evokes some fun, and it, it evokes kind of some of the emotions that you want your buyer to feel uh, that will get them to go ahead and purchase that shirt. So now you've got all of the bits in the tool filled out. You've clicked sell, and now your shirt is searchable on Amazon.com. Um, if you just sit down and wait, you could be waiting a fairly long time for the world to sort of trip across your shirt. So please, make sure that you've got a plan to market your shirt. Make it easy for your fans to buy what they want from you. I mean, if you've got some fans of your game and they really love your game, chances are they would really love to have one of your shirts too. So make it easier for your fans to buy the shirts and make it easy for your shirts to be where your fans want to buy it. And here are some of the things that we've learned while, while marketing shirts. Um, first is 80% of the orders that you're going to get from your shirt are going to come from in-app promotions. Now, this is more than just adding your shirt to your in-app purchase catalog. You've really got to integrate the shirt buying opportunity into the fabric of the game for the very, very best results. Um, now for, well, we'll go back to um, beating the boss at level 10. Uh, you know, as soon as I beat the boss at level 10, I have a feeling I'm going to be really ecstatic. I'm going to be really proud of what I've done. I'm going to be proud of finishing the 5K. And that's when I'm going to want to buy the shirt of this really amazingly cool boss death scene captured on the shirt so that I can wear that around saying, yeah, I beat the boss at level 10. It was amazing. Let me tell you about it. What I'm probably not going to do is beat the boss at level 10 um, and then think, wow, I wonder if there's anything in the in-app purchase catalog that I need to go look at right now. Um, and that's just not going to happen. And I worry that if you don't put a uh, surface a dialogue or surface some sort of control that will let your player go ahead and see the shirt that commemorates that experience, and if you bury that in your in-app purchase catalog, you're going to lose the moment. You're going to, you're, the customer will have, will have kind of um, gotten over that. And yeah, maybe they'd still like to have the T-shirt, but they're probably not going to go, uh, go about that as excitedly with as much enthusiasm as they would have had you offered it to them uh, when they'd finally made that achievement. So absolutely integrate that into the fabric of your game. And, and if it's certainly, if integrating it is too much work, Yes, please do put it in your IP catalog, but don't say they didn't try to help you out here on this one, all right? Um, given that 80% of your shirts are going to be sold through your app, that leaves a fifth of your shirts that are going to be sold when your app's not even open. Okay, that's actually, that's really cool. Um, making money on your intellectual property while your game's not even open rocks. So um, take a look at some of the things that uh, we've seen people do to promote their shirts outside of the app. Uh, certainly social promotions. And we've actually made this really easy on Merch by Amazon. Um, if you click one of your shirts, um, you go to the Promote tab, and you'll see a bunch of check boxes by your shirts. Click one of your shirts, and then uh, you'll get to go ahead and promote that using what you see here. There's, there's a Facebook and a Twitter icon right there. And if you click one of those, it'll create a Facebook post that leads people right back to your shirt's product page on Amazon. Or it'll create a tweet that links people right back to your product page on Amazon. That's a phenomenally easy way to do some fairly powerful and in this case, free marketing. So there's really no reason, there's no excuse for you not to go out and do this immediately after you create your T-shirt. So, so guys, please do that. Um, you can also do things like pin your T-shirt design on Pinterest. Um, you'll, you'll find that you can get the shirt's URL. I mean, one of the things you'll see in product details is your shirt has a dedicated URL. Go ahead, take that URL to a tool like Bitly, and turn that into a friendly URL that's easy for people to type and remember. And now what you can do is you can post that link on any blog that you use to promote your app. You can use it on your games forum where people are asking you questions about your game or your app. Um, you can even use it in print media, for goodness sake, so that if you're handing out business cards or if you're handing out game info cards at an indie game, um, at an indie game conference, 
uh, people can go ahead and get some of the really cool art that you have as a T-shirt right from that printed media that you're handing out. So absolutely don't let anything slip by. And a really great example of this is what Musical.ly has done. They've done a fantastic job of engaging their customers outside of their app. <clears throat> One of the things that uh, they've done is they've posted images of their top users actually wearing their shirts. I, I can't emphasize them how, how really cool it is that they do that. People who are your influencers, they like being influencers in large part because they get asked questions. And help making them a rock star in their community is actually really good. I mean, it feels great when someone makes you a rock star and you can show all the people in your community that, yay, look at that. Hey, Musical.ly put me up on their website. Why? Well, because I'm a top user and, well, I'm wearing the T-shirt they sent me. And so making them a rock star with their customers is going to make them more eager to continue being an advocate for your game or your app. It's also more likely to encourage other people to become active advocates and influencers for your brand. So absolutely help make your advocates and influencers rock stars. Um, that worked so well for them, they actually went a step further. And they sent shirts to their top users, who then put the shirts on, shot a Musical.ly video of them wearing the shirts, and then they posted those videos on their website, uh, which just sort of like took the first idea and like turbocharged it. Uh, they also bought a lot of their shirts and took them to live events like VidCon and Playlist Live. And they told people, hey, here are some really great shirts. Have a shirt, have a shirt. And if you like these shirts, we've got more at our Amazon store. So they handed out the Amazon.com URL to more shirts. And they've actually done a really good job of promoting their shirts outside the app. And as a result, Musical.ly is just selling a whole bunch of shirts. And i got to believe that they're pretty proud of uh, – of how well their, their shirts are doing out in the stores. So that's, um, that's a pretty good deal. Now, the next thing that you might want to do is actually advertise your shirts in other people's apps. And you can certainly do that. Uh, let, me, let me tell you a little bit about ad creatives that are currently working right now. Uh, ad creatives that look like a part of your app are great, particularly if you're running them as in-house ads. Um, one of the best deals we've got going is the Merch SDK, which will actually run ads for your T-shirts in the Amazon Ad Network. And this is fantastic because you're going to get great data, the ability to target, retarget, and do sales attribution tools. So uh, what that means to you as a developer is you'll find out for every ad impression how many impressions generated click-throughs. And for every click-through that takes people to your, um, your shirt page on Amazon.com, you'll find out how many of those people actually converted and bought a shirt. This is really helpful because it tells you where people are leaking out of the sales funnel for shirts. If you have a lot of impressions in your ad but not a lot of click-throughs, maybe you need to change some of the assets in the ad. You need to put some different art or some different text in the ad. If you've got a great click-through rate on your ad, but you're losing customers at your shirt's detail page, um, well, perhaps you, you have some text that needs changing or your bullet points need adjusting, or perhaps if you're going to a shirt that you didn't show a thumbnail of, maybe uh, people just aren't that attracted by the art on your shirt. Um, this brings us back to actually a, a point that I wanted to make earlier. A great way to find out what art to put on your shirt? Ask your customers. Seriously. Uh, chances are good that you've got a, a forum or some sort of way that you can communicate and interact with uh, the users of your, your game or app. Use that forum to ask them, hey, if we were going to make one of these five shirts, which one would you want to get? Let them tell you what makes them happy. And when they see that you've listened and you've actually made that shirt available for sale, not only are they going to feel great that they were, you know, that they were heard, chances are they're going to feel some skin in the game because they voted for that shirt, and they'll probably go ahead and buy it. So hopefully not having an attractive shirt is not one of the reasons that you don't convert. But I'll tell you what, if you use the uh, Merch by Amazon SDK, you're going to actually get that data, and you're actually going to know. Um, certainly you can use other ad networks as well, uh, again, because 
you can add a URL that you want people to go to when they click on it. And and that's that's fantastic. So regardless of the ad network you use, I want you to consider using the Amazon branded tools like the Shop Now logo. We have a, a, a neat set of brand guidelines that actually tell you all the really cool stuff that you can do with the Amazon brand. Why is that important? Because unlike some brand that people may not be familiar with or they may not trust for an online transaction, Amazon is actually pretty good in that space. A lot of people already have Amazon accounts and feel pretty comfortable buying stuff from Amazon so that you can actually co-brand your shirt's advertisement with Amazon is really going to help click through, and we think it's really going to help conversion. So absolutely do that to create ads that work. The last thing that I want you to do, guys, is wear your own shirt. I mean, are you wearing your shirt now? Okay, if not, how come? I mean, okay, yes, there are good reasons like, well, I don't have an account yet, or I wore it yesterday and it's in the wash, or I've got to wear a suit to the office. Okay, those, those are okay. But really, if other than that, you're not wearing your shirt, we may have a problem. Um, if you don't want to wear your shirt a lot, why would anybody else? Guys, you've got to make a shirt that you'd be proud to wear and wear a lot. If you have a hard time coming up with an idea that, that meets that criteria, um, it's okay to go out and get help. There are lots of communities out there. There's some great Facebook communities. Go ahead and search for um, uh, Merch by Amazon on Facebook, and you'll find a bunch of Facebook communities where a lot of designers hang out. And please feel free to ask them for design ideas. And because these guys do T-shirts as their design living, they have probably have a pretty good idea about what is and isn't going to work. And they'd be happy to work with your particular app or brand uh, to make it something that, well, you would be proud to wear a lot. And order shirts for your family. You know, make your kids wear them. <laughs> if, your ki if your kid wants to buy an IAP item from his favorite game, say, yeah, sure, but only if you wear the shirt for the day. <laughs> um, it, beats, it beats having to get your kid to, to pack T-shirts from a box in your garage and, and send them out all over the country. Um, okay, we've covered a lot of things on the last 45 minutes. And I kind of want to sum things up with, Steps that uh, I'd like you to take now to be more successful with Merch by Amazon. The first thing I want you to do is go and get a Merch account. I understand that the waiting list for Merch can be kind of brutal. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, when people found out that we were going to help give you a shorter line to a Merch account, uh, the number of people who actually signed up for the afternoon's webinar went up significantly. So uh, here's, here's what my offer is to you. If you go ahead and a, a request an invitation, go to merch.amazon.com. Um, make sure you're signed into Amazon with the business email address that you want to use for your shirts um, because that will end up being where we send uh, all of your email and stuff. So go ahead and go to merch.amazon.com and click on request an invitation. Uh, you'll get a form like the one you see on the screen. Uh, go ahead and put in your organization name, your industry type, your website. And in additional information, I want you to do two things. I want you to put in the first part of the email address, the part before the ampersand, uh, of the email address that you used to register for this webinar. I also want you to put down hashtag 830, like um, you know, on, on August 30th, 830 webinar. And what we'll do is we'll pull applications that we get uh, until end of day today. We'll go ahead and pull that list of new account applications and we'll match the email address with the people who attended today's um, webinar. So the people who actually attended the live event will match that up with the email address on the Merch account application. Where we find a match, we'll go ahead and send you an invitation to come join. Unfortunately, this means you can't just send your friend uh, the hashtag and tell him to put his email address in the box because we actually will check that against the list of attendees. But for those of you who have actually made it with me this far, thank you. I want you to be successful on Merch. And I want you to have an account so you can put all of these great ideas to use as soon as possible. Now, uh, I do need you to do this. Uh, realistically, I want you to do this before end of day today because the morning webinar is when we started the 24-hour clock, and that's going to be up uh, pretty early. So get this done before end of day today. Now, 
like I said, since we had a whole bunch of people sign on for the webinar after uh, after the morning webinar, we're probably going to have an absolute ton of people uh, taking advantage of this offer. I doubt that we're going to be able to get all of these approved uh, in the first week. So give us a couple of weeks, um, maybe three, to actually cycle everyone into the program. Um, don't worry, you know we haven't forgotten about you. Um, you're not still sitting at the back of a very long list. Um, you're actually at the, at the front of a very, very popular list. Um, but we are probably going to need um, uh, more than just a few days to, to work through that. Um, but okay, that's step one, getting a merch account. Step two, go make a shirt. Uh, really, and this is, this is surprising. A lot of people will get a merch account, but it will take them a while to actually make their first shirt. Again, back to the whole analysis paralysis thing, except this time on the shirt maker side. Rewatch the webcast and take the ideas that we're giving you and implement one. Um, again, you've got 25. Get one of them out the door because you can't make any money selling shirts if you don't start with at least one. And then please market the shirt. Um, a lot of people are really so proud of the first shirt they make, they forget to tell anyone about it. And they say, how come we haven't sold any? I said, well, what social media work have you done? And they said, what, social media? So please go market your shirt. And if any of that is tough um, or confusing, join a community. Um, a lot of communities exist to help you design and, and manage your, your shirts. Um, Amazon actually has an official um, um, uh, forum uh, on the Amazon Developer Forum. You can get there by going to Bitly Merch Forum, and you can ask all kinds of questions and get official answers. There are also all kinds of Facebook forums available. Um, uh, so go ahead to Facebook and search for uh, Merch by Amazon, and you'll you'll get things uh, that can be pretty darn helpful for you. All right, that about wraps it up. And what I want to do here is just kind of leave you with a, with a couple things. One, I want you to join the um, merch community that we have. Uh, so again, Bitly Merch Forum. And after I close this, the presentation today, there is going to be a survey that you can take. And I want to make sure that you guys get a, a chance to tell us how we've done and um, uh, how much you've liked that. I also want a chance to answer some of the questions that you guys have been asking. So uh, let me go ahead and look through some of those questions and see if I, I, I have, I, I've got time to answer a, about five or six of those. So let me go in and, and look for five or six questions I can answer. Um, here we go. Oh, um, okay, that's actually, that's actually a good question. Um, I'm not a developer and I don't make apps. Uh, can I still do merch by Amazon? Um, yes, actually, you can. While my job focuses around helping developers be more successful by using promotional tools that will help them uh, even when their app's not open, the very first shirt ever made in the merch by Amazon program was for a charitable autism foundation and we helped them create shirts that supported one of their fundraisers and that was actually a very cool first shirt ever to make with merch um, so yes even if you don't make apps you can still participate in merch all right let me look uh, let me look around a little more Ooh, how do I track my impressions and click through rates for my t-shirts if I'm not a developer and don't use the okay and the, and and don't use the um, Amazon ad network is what they meant. Um, there are lots of analytics tools that you might use um, uh, on websites for click tracking. Once you land on the Amazon web page, though, it's going to be hard to tell um, uh, which click actually resulted in a in a conversion and, and, and which landing actually didn't. So that's going to be largely dependent upon the analytics tools that you decide to use if you're driving traffic from a website. One of the things that was asked in the previous session that I thought was a great question is, let's say you've got three campaigns going. You've got a Facebook campaign uh, and, and two other campaigns going. How can you uh, tell uh, which ones are actually getting clicked on to take you? to your product detail page. Um, certainly if you use Bitly, they'll let you create one shortcut for your shirt's URL. 
but there are other uh, link shortening services out there other than Bitly. So if you used three different link shortening services, you would get a unique friendly link for um, each of your campaigns. And they can all point to the same detail page, which is kind of cool. That way, you can use the link shortening tool's own analytics page to see how many clicks you got on each friendly URL and then find out, hey, you know, I used my, um, I used my Bitly link on my, on my Facebook promotion, and it turns out that got twice as many click-throughs as the other two friendly links did. So, hey, whatever creative I was using there worked out really well, or maybe the Facebook thing worked out really well. The nice thing is you can also use that to test different creatives by creating uh, three different friendly links, each of which is tied to a different creative's ad in, say, a Facebook ad promotion. You can actually find out uh, fairly easily which one is going to be um, working better. Of course, you can also do that through the Facebook ad management tool without needing to create bit.ly links. Um, anyway, next question. Um, I'm in the UK. Uh, when will you start selling T-shirts um, and delivering to customers outside the US and open up to other countries? Um, wow, I, I, you know, as soon as we do decide to open up to other countries and territories, you'll hear about it on our social media first. Uh, obviously, I, I, I don't have the dates. I don't know, uh, you know, or if I did know, I couldn't disclose what our plans would be. But certainly, if you want to find out about it the minute it happens, Follow us on social media, uh, you know, and go ahead, and, and I'll certainly be um, tweeting about that on, on my Twitter account. So follow us, and you'll find about it, uh, find out about it there first. Uh, how are we doing on time? Yeah, we're actually we're doing fine on time. Um, <laughs> so as I'm scanning through the questions, I'm seeing a bunch of when will you start selling? You know, fill in product name here, like hoodies and hats, or when will you start selling? You know, pink things or or purple things or or other colors. Um, uh, it, it's certainly it's certainly a valid valid request. And um, you know, hoodies has actually been pretty popular in this. Uh, particular webinar, I've seen hoodies come up a bunch, and I got to tell you, um, I work I work with the guys on the merch team, and they are sitting up to their eyeballs in all kinds of different stuff that they're they're looking at, they're researching, and I know that they want to deliver all of the products you're asking for as much as you want to buy them, but I mean I think I can speak for the merch team when I say that they want to make sure that they can meet the expectations of an Amazon customer at scale um, before they make any of these things available. They want to be able to knock quality over the fence, and they want to do a fantastic job um, uh, if they do decide to start um, selling additional products. So I know they're working up there uh, doing all kinds of experiments, trying different fabrics, different colors on all of these different products. So again, stay tuned to our social media, and when we make something available, I'd be pretty confident that it's going to look great and it's going to be really, it's going to make your customers uh, really, really happy. Um, same thing goes for, for um, different color shirts. Again, we want to offer shirts that sell well and understanding that um, uh, different colors at different times of year can be important. Uh, again, the team will, will um, uh, do as best to accommodate all of the different requests that you've made. Uh, more questions. No, here. Okay, this this is good to know. Um, occasionally, people out there don't want to have to do their own hard work. They don't want to have to do their own creative work. They would really much rather find something that's selling well, and then rip it off, take a Photoshop or a screenshot of it, and then submit that as if it were their own. Um, that's not okay. And we really want to help you protect your intellectual property. So what I want you to do is I want if, if this is happening to you, I want you to go to the Merch by Amazon dashboard, and there is a, a Contact Us button, and it's basically a, it's, it's sending an email to the team at Merch by Amazon, and go ahead and, and tell people what's happening. Um, establish that yes, this is your brand, you own the brand, um, you know, and, and and let them know who is. Uh, um, you know, who's violating that. And I think that uh, um, you'll be happy because we really do take that seriously and we're fairly aggressive in, in protecting the IP of, of, our, of our customers. 
Um, all right, let me see what else we've got. Um, actually, uh, we are running out of time, and um, I'd like to go ahead now and um, uh, uh, sign off after thanking you guys very much for attending today. And please, don't forget to take the survey that's going to show up just as soon as I, as I end the presentation. So guys, uh, have fun with the survey, and thank you once again for attending.